Hey everybody, I'm Tammy and welcome to this empty nest. Today we are going to be making three of my favorite holiday side dishes and we're going to start with Mama Kim's brown rice. This stuff is pretty simple to make, just a few ingredients. We're going to start by chopping up an onion and make sure that you preheat your oven to 350. So we're going to melt one stick of butter and then add our onion to that. And we're going to just cook that until your onions are, you know, translucent, until you get your onions as done as you want them. And y'all stop looking at my streaky stove. I didn't realize that cleaner was going to streak that bad. So y'all just pretend like you don't see that, okay? All right. So then we're just going to season this up a little bit with some salt and pepper. Just do this to taste however much you like. And then we're going to continue to cook that around until that butter is uh, completely melted and our onions are done. And then we're going to add one cup of instant white rice. Now, we're going to cook this around. We're going to brown it a little bit. I still don't think that's the reason we call this brown rice. I think it's just because it comes out brown. But don't quote me on that. So we're just going to cook this around until you get a little color on your rice. You want to just get it done a little bit. And then once you get that all like you like it, we're going to add our one can of beef consomme, not beef broth. It's got to be beef consomme. And I guess that's how you say that. If it's not, don't tell me. Just let me be embarrassed in silence over here. Then we're going to add one can of water. And then go ahead. I don't know if I said make sure that you preheat your oven to 350. And then in a greased bacon dish, we're going to add all of our mixture. And it looks like a whole lot of liquid, y'all, but trust the process. It's going to soak it all up. And we're going to cook this for about 45 minutes. Just watch it because everybody's oven is a little bit different. You just want to cook it until all that juice is soaked up. And I think it took mine about maybe um, close to an hour. So just watch it. And y'all, this is what it comes out looking like. And look, if you don't like all the onion, you can put less onion. You can put smaller onions. I don't know if you could leave the onion out because I don't know. I just feel like it, it tastes so good in there. But do what you want. And, you know, I had to make me up a little bowl of it because as soon as the camera went off, I had to eat some of this because it was smelling some kind of good, y'all. So next up, we're going to do sweet potato casserole. And I know that everybody has their own way of making sweet potato casserole, but I could not find my recipe, y'all, the one that I've used for years. So I dug around on the, on the internet and tried to find what I could come up with that was as close to mine as I could get it. So you're going to start out with two 40-ounce cans of Bruce's yams. You're going to want to drain those as good as you can. Then you're going to add two tablespoons of melted butter and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and one egg. Now, you can add a little brown sugar to this if you want to. I feel like it's, it was sweet enough without it, so I didn't add any. And I like mine smooth, so I got out my hand mixer. You can do it just with a masher if that's what you've got, if you like yours and you don't mind a few lumps in it. But like I said, I like mine pretty smooth, so I got out the little hand mixer. So make sure you preheat your oven to 375 for these. Then you're going to just put your mixture in this, uh, it's an 8 by 8 pan, and just smooth it out. And then we are going to put it in the oven for about 20 minutes, roughly, just until it gets warmed all the way through. So while this is cooking in the oven, we're going to put our topping together. Now we're going to start out with a quarter of a cup of all-purpose flour, a quarter of a cup of brown sugar, um, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, which I think I cut out, but it does call for an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And then it also called for a half of a stick of melted butter. Now, personally, I think this comes out a little bit too runny. I like, I would, I wanted my topping a little more crumbly. This is more of a smooth kind of a, I don't know, a wetter topping. So I tried adding a little bit more flour and I thought, Lord, I'm going to add the whole bag in here by the time I get it where I want it. So I just kind of said, you know what, we're going to roll with it. We're just going to go with what it is. 
So after you get it all mixed up good, you're going to add a half a cup of chopped pecans and just mix this up real good. And it does get a little bit thicker as it sits, you know, while you're waiting on the sweet potato part to come out of the oven. So once you get your sweet potatoes out of the oven, you're going to add a little layer of marshmallows. You're going to add that pecan uh, topping mixture. And then you're going to add another little layer of marshmallows. I think we could have done with one layer, but that's okay. You know, more marshmallows, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody. So then you're going to pop that back into the oven for about eight to 10 minutes until you get your marshmallows as brown as you want them. And that's it. This It turned out really, really delicious. Like I said, I think I would change the topping to make it a little more crumbly. But other than that, it still tasted really good and it, it did just fine. So the last thing that we're going to do is homemade yeast rolls. Y'all, I found these on uh, another YouTube channel and I wrote everything down and completely forgot to save the video. So I'm going to try to go back and find it and I will link it down below if I can find it. I hope I can find it because it was really good and I definitely want to give him credit. So what we're going to do is start out with a half a cup of warm water, about 110 degrees, and then we're going to add two tablespoons of sugar. He says you can add two to three. I didn't want mine to be too sweet. I don't know if it would have made that much of a difference, so I just went with two tablespoons of sugar. And then you're going to add one packet of yeast and his recipe also called for the rapid rise, and I didn't have that. So I just went ahead and went with the regular yeast. And I just left this on here. So you, if you don't know what yeast does or you're not sure, this is what it's going to do when it's ready. You're going to let it sit for about five minutes, and it's going to activate that yeast. So once your five minutes is up, you're going to add a half a cup of room temperature milk, a teaspoon of salt, and you're going to mix that all around real good. And then you're going to add a quarter of a cup of oil. So once you get that all good and mixed up, you're going to add your two and a half cups of flour. And y'all make sure that when you're, if, if you decide you're going to make those, and I hope you do, um, give yourself plenty of time. Make sure that you have a lot of time to get these actually prepared. But the actual preparation pro process is not difficult. It's very easy. It's limited ingredients and, and it's not a whole, whole lot of work. But you're going to have to let this stuff rise three different times. So just make sure you give yourself enough time to do that so they're ready when you need them. So once you get all your ingredients mixed up, if you'll notice here, the dough looks completely different. And that's because I needed this for a few minutes before I realized I wasn't recording. So you just are going to do this for about 10 minutes. And you can see the texture is way different than it was when we first mixed it up in the bowl. So, and I put wax paper down because I have burn tile on my countertops, which I don't know who thought that was a good idea. but so I just put some wax paper down so I don't have to deal with the the tile. And he says if you poke your dough like that and it kind of bounces back at you, then it's ready. So once you knead this around for about 10 minutes, you're going to put it in, you're going to oil your bowl. And then you're going to stick your pretty little dough ball right down there in that bowl. And then you're going to put a little towel over it. And don't turn your oven on, but leave your oven off, turn the oven light on and sit your covered bowl in the oven for about an hour. And then once it um, you come, you bring it out, you see how much bigger that got, how much it rose. So you're just going to poke it down or punch it down or whatever. It looks like moon craters. But anyway, you're going to just poke it down, and then you're going to cover it again and put it back in the oven for 30 more minutes and then you're going to see it rises back up again. So once you've done this and let it rise twice, you're going to take it out of your bowl and you see it's not sticky anymore. You're going to take it out of your bowl and just, you know, kind of knead it around a little bit until you get all the air out of your dough. And then once you get that done, you're going to take I wish I had one of those fancy little dough 
dough scraper. What what are they called? A, I don't know if it's some kind of scraper, y'all. But I didn't have one, so I just took a big knife and I hacked mine. So you're going to want to make, it's going to make 12 rolls. <clears throat> so I cut it in half and then I cut it in half again. And somewhere in my brain, I thought I was about to cut this into three pieces. And I don't know why, because I knew that wasn't going to work. So I just kind of balled it up. And then I that didn't work either, y'all. So then I was like, well, let me stretch it out so I can kind of, I wanted to kind of try as close as I could to get these pieces even so I wouldn't have a bunch of wonky rolls in my pan. So I just rolled these out and, and you know, and now we're going to cut these into three pieces. And that way we'll have our 12 rolls. So you're going to get your, um, your little greased bacon dish. And then we are going to make these rolls. Now, when I started doing this, I realized that y'all were not going to be able to see half of what I was doing. And look, watch right here. Don't roll. Don't do that. Don't do that, y'all. Don't roll it like a cookie. This is a roll. So what he did, and it looks so cute, is just kind of pulled it around and kind of tucked it, you know, kind of tucked it there under the bottom. And his looked so cute. So then I tried to do that. So did I do it perfect? Yeah, probably not. But you know what? I did the best I could. And we still ate them darn rolls, y'all. So once you get, you know, your dough all cut into your 12 pieces, hopefully a little bit better um, on the size than I did. Because, yeah, it, mine were, were not the same size. They were not uniform. But you're just going to roll your little your little dough into balls. And when you get your, your little balls all made, you're going to cover this again. And you're going to sit it back in that oven with the light on for about 45 minutes. Now you're going to preheat your oven to 370. And then you are going to cook these rolls for about 15 to 17 minutes. And this is what they look like when they're done. Now, I will tell you, when I took these out of the oven, I really thought I had done something wrong because they felt really hard on the top. But once I brushed that butter on them, y'all, they were just so soft and squishy. And these turned out so good. So clearly, when you take them out of the oven while they're still hot, brush them with butter. And I thought too, well, mine are not, maybe they're not brown enough. I hope they're done, but y'all, I'm telling you, they're perfect. And they're so delicious. I think the, the guy that made these in the original recipe, he said this was his grandmother's uh, recipe, and then it just brought so many memories back of her. So I thought it was just the sweetest video. I'm going to have to find it so I can link it down there. But y'all, this is them. They are light and fluffy, and it's so dang delicious. You have got to try them. They're worth the time it takes to get them done. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you stick around for more videos to come. And I hope maybe you'll try some of these recipes and some of my favorites might become some of your favorites. Uh -huh.